Billy, we are ready. Let's do it. The bracket that we've all been waiting for. We alluded to it on Wednesday. A teaser, as they say in the business. Billy is here with his... We're, we'll let's start with... You know what? Let's start with fuckable spirals. Okay. Because then it'll be interesting how it relates Translates. to your actual grades. Okay, so... I looked at a lot of tape. Uh, it's going to be in a blog on BarstoolSports.com. It will be posted tomorrow morning. I have a lot of video that backs up these claims. Fuckable spirals. So this is this is a ranking, not a bracket, right? This is just guys who have it and guys who don't. Got okay. it. Okay. So binary. There's a lot of guys who have uh, fuckable spiral energy, but don't have fuckable spirals. Okay? I, uh, yep. I so, see what you're saying. So there's guys like Dustin Crum, mm-hmm. Sam Howell, and Kenny Pickett. All have fuckable spiral energy. We just saw Kenny Pickett. He came in and said hello to us. I know, I know. Okay, but don't right, worry, don't right, worry, don't right, worry. It's just, right. it's just about the spiral. Look, I'm going to say Dustin Crum and Sam Howell have a little bit of weird mechanics that make the ball look a little weird. They, it comes down like sideways. It doesn't look like a straight projectile. The axis is wobbly. The axis on it. is wobbly. Yeah, yeah, that's the big it's thing. It's like, you know, the ball points down. It's a little weird. You'll see what I'm saying I, in the blog. I, I'm a little nervous, by the way, because. How many? How many deep? How many quarterbacks did you watch tape on? I watched like everyone from the twenty twenty two draft. Okay, so is there a certain my favorite quarterback? Is he in there? He might be Western Kentucky. Uh, so we talk about him. Okay, all right, good. Yeah, because he is the best. Uh, Bailey Zappi. I mean, he's got the best name. He has the best name. His name's Bailey Zappi. Yeah. Um. So it, really, with Kenny Pickett, it's his glove. Seeing the ball come off a gloved hand mm-hmm. messes with my brain. Yeah, yep. that's fair, fair. So I don't even. I can't. But trust me, yeah, it will make up. No, for if later. you're talking about a fuckable spiral, like, like using a your glove is like taking a shower with a raincoat on. Mm-hmm. That's that's a that that's a Feels better. Kenny, not you. Pro- like mm-hmm. that's a you problem, not a Kenny problem. Kenny's right. just throwing out there. It's nothing against him. It's just our brains can't handle it. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Fair. So these are guys with super fuckable spirals. Okay. Number one, Malik Willis. Yep. Yeah. Goddamn. Bomb. And the thing is, I love how the ball turns over on his long balls. Yep. So it just goes up, and the it points up when it's going up. Mm-hmm. And when it's going down, it points down, and it looks like an absolute cruise missile. Yep. Just zoom. I, I've always wondered about that with, with quarterbacks and punters. What makes the ball turn over as opposed to it, it staying up? I'm not a physics guy. I don't know, but this guy, moon bombs. And then he also, he like if you look at his shorter passes, tight darts. In and out, jumps off his hand. Mm-hmm. That's just like when Aaron Rodgers threw that uh, pass to the guys on the yacht at that golf tournament. Mm-hmm. When you see that jumping off the hand type velocity, where mm-hmm. it's like his motion looks, yeah, yeah, his motion looks this fast, but then the ball looks faster than his motion. Yep, mm-hmm. that's that's that extra fuckable. That's Malik Moonbombs. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's one. Two. Carson Strong. Yep. Nevada. Very, very fuckable spiral. Yep. Great, great quarterback name, too. Carson Strong has a, he throws a long ball, good long ball, but some of his intermediate throws, very fuckable spiral. Just slips in and out. I don't know how he does it. Looks like a wizard with it. Love it. Last, this guy I think has the most fuckable spiral, Jack Cohn. Ooh. Okay. Jack Cohn, super Badger. fuckable spiral. Five star mm-hmm. from Long, Long Island. New York guy. Shout out, Boomer. Little bias. <laughs> but this guy, he's he threw 55 miles per hour in the speed throw. He was the only guy to hit the exact target on the speed throw when throwing it out of wow. the five guys. Sam Howell had the fastest at like 58, 59, but he didn't even hit anywhere close to the target. Yeah, I'm gonna hold that against so him later in the. Put that like translate that into something that is applicable in my real world experience in this office. Uh, 55 miles an hour with a football. How fast would that be with like a high noon can? Mm. Um, enough to kill you. Okay. Okay. So you now could, let's you could kill somebody with this. Yeah. Football. yeah. Let's okay. do let's do it another way. So 55 miles an hour. If you were, well, that's pretty fast. Say you say it was going 35 miles an hour as a car and you were running in um Queens, Queens, Bronx, Bronx. Could break your ankle. Break your ankle. Okay. Break your ankle. Right, yeah. Got it. Got it. But uh, just putting into real world so people understand the real world. Uh, <laughs> also, it's just issues here. Jack Cohen has a high release point, which I'm a sucker for. Yep. So when okay. it comes out, we all are. <laughs> so now, 
We're going to go. I agree to, with that. High, yeah. release, high release point and funky release points. Like, I don't like yeah. the in-the-middle release points. I like, right. like if, to, if they can get all over the place like a Patrick Mahomes yeah. or if they can – or a nice high release point right. that's like – Well, Mahomes has a high release point when he's just straight, straight up, up right. which I like. Yes. If you're straight up high release point, that's sexy. Yes. Mm-hmm. One thing about, about college quarterbacks as opposed to the NFL when it comes to their fuckable spirals, college quarterbacks who are left-handed usually have fuckable spirals to mm-hmm. me. The second they put on an NFL uniform and you take the, the stripes off the ball, mm. I would not touch that spiral yeah. with a 10-foot It's ball. uncatchable. All right. Is this the bracket? This is the bracket. But first, I have to explain the top eight that I chose. Okay. Because it's not everyone's typical top eight. All right. So number eight, like, well, no particular order. I have the top fours basically the same as everybody. Kenny Pickett, Sam Howell, Malik Willis, Matt Corral, in no particular order. And then my bottom four are a little... Is a little different to everybody else's. I put EJ Perry on there for reasons I'll for explain. For Brown because he picked up the trash? No, no, no. There's other reasons. Oh, okay. Sure. We got Jack Cohen on there, Carson Strong, Desmond Ritter. So No Bailey Zappi. Four. No Bailey Zappi, unfortunately. That's unfortunate. Yeah. He's electric. But you said we were going to get to Bailey Zappi. I think we just did. We just did. By me uh, saying oh, no Bailey Zappi. No Bailey Zappi. I, I, <laughs> Billy, you know that people heard you talk earlier on this podcast. Get to and you said, well, there's well, something I, else coming about Bailey. I was hoping Bailey. you guys It's going to be it. later on in the bracket. And then Big Cat's oh. going to say, hey, where's Bailey yeah, Zappi? Yeah, where's I, Bailey Zappi? I, I, I hope you guys were going to forget about it. I didn't Can you just get Bailey down. Zappi? Can we just say Bailey Zappi lost the play-in game? He lost the play-in to EJ Perry for All the reasons I'll explain. Fair, Okay. Matchup number one, we got Kenny Pickett versus EJ Perry. This is the number one seed versus the eight seed. Okay. EJ Perry is only on here because he was the most athletic quarterback. If you uh, combine his scores, there was a certain NFL draft scourge by next-gen stats that put EJ Perry is the most athletic quarterback in the draft. How is, okay. he, how is he more athletic than Malik Willis, though? Because well, it's he, the scores. Because he, he didn't run at the combine, Well, problem. it's the next-gen yeah. scores. The next-gen well, stats. Yeah. Next-gen, yeah. he ran And also, E.J. Perry picked up the trash. Malik Willis gave it to the homeless people, so that evens yeah. itself out. Exactly. So, he got on there for the athleticism and picking up the trash. Oh, so he did. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> exactly. So, that's why he's on the list. <laughs> um, you know. He, L- listen to this podcast using the 15-second rewind button must yeah. be an absolute mind <laughs> yes. when you hear Billy yes. talk. Yes, Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so uh Just anyway. I, you're like it's it exactly can be used it's like um aloha was it aloha means different things yeah the uh inuits have like 40 different words for snow yeah billy's, billy's got, using exactly like confirming that he's wrong confirming that he's right Kind of just trying to move on from whatever we're talking about. Mm-hmm. There's many examples. Well, the closest that he'll ever get to admitting that he was lying about something or wrong is just when he takes a pause and he goes Anyways. Yeah, so anyways. Yeah. <laughs> uh yeah, so this isn't going to be <laughs> Okay. This isn't going to be an El- Ellinger uh Trevor Lawrence situation. Kenny Pickett blows him out of the water. Okay. Matchup number 2. We got Malik Willis versus Carson Strong. Um Malik Willis is number 2, Carson Strong is number 7. Uh Carson Strong big arm. You know, he was in the running for he's one of the fuckable spiral guys, but Malik Willis has been said to be in my opinion combination of Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen. This is what the people are saying. So the best quarterback of all time. Exactly. Okay. So, you know, if you look at uh, Malik's throws from the combine, insane, absolutely crazy type stuff. So I did the exact calculation on how far he threw that ball. Uh, if you do the Pythagorean theorem, it comes out to 75 on a line, which is insane. Uh, and it was fuckable, too. He has very the, fuckable. The fuckable Turned over. Spiral. Moon bomb. Moon bomb. It went high. It was a high bomb, too. Okay, so now we have Kenny Pickett and Malik Willis in the final four. Right, exactly. Okay. Um, also, he gave the homeless guy clothes. Yep. Huge. Uh, matchup number three, Sam Howell versus Jack Cohen. You know, they faced off, uh, but this is the first upset of the bracket. Oh! I have Jack Cohen beating out Sam Howell. No bias um, because he's uh, from New York. No, that was absolutely biased. Yep. Um, so <laughs> Exactly. I, think, I also think that Billy learned from Jake's mistakes and is putting a Wisconsin guy, like, advancing yeah. him. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Yeah, smart man. The whole um, ideology behind this is Sam Howell threw 59, but he didn't hit the target yep. on the speed pitch. And the thing is, with quarterbacks, guys are always should always be trying to hit the target. Accuracy. You always should have, mm-hmm. you know, a pinpoint on a jersey you're aiming for. You know, he didn't hit it. Jack Cohen hit it right on the center yep. with his 55 mile per hour. So that's really why I chose Jack Cohen. Also. Uh, we'll get to it New later. York. Yeah. New, York New York guy. Yeah. Sam Howell also. <laughs> we'll get to that later. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, haven't discussed it yet. I, I kind of want to do the, f- we should get to the final four and then we should save the final four for Monday. Okay, perfect. Because it's like everyone's like, and yeah. the anticipation is going to kill everyone, right? Exactly. Yep. Yeah. 
Uh, we'll do it at the end of the show on Monday. Also, Sam Howell uh, didn't cover a couple times and upset me during the season. But we're moving on. That's I completely agree with that. Also, let down in the Heisman race. Sam yes. Howell, I'm sure you're a great guy. I'd love to meet you. But Sam he's... Howell wins the Jake Fromm Award, where if he could have come out last year, probably would have been better for him. Right. So this is matchup number four. Okay. So we have three of our four Final Fours. Final Four will be Monday. Number four, Matt Corral, Old Miss, versus number five, Desmond Ritter, Cincinnati. So let me preface this by saying that I live next to Ben Mintz. Mm-hmm. Matt okay. Corral has been a topic of a discussion for the whole season. Yep. Um, we've been debating, is he a systems quarterback? Are his 10 wins in the SEC with the SEC schedule? Now, when you say systems, that means he can play in multiple systems. System. Okay, got it. So I looked at... He also at, shares a birthday with Jackie Robinson. Mm. Wow. And me. Wow. Desmond Ritter from Cincinnati also had a great season, made it to the college football playoff. So how am I going to compare these two quarterbacks? I looked at their stats versus Bama. Because okay. they both played Bama. I, I think that's, <laughs> that's fair. That's they, totally fair. Because fair. The, that, talent around them is exactly the same. That defense is basically an NFL defense. Correct. So we just got to look at that. Um, Matt Corral performed better against Bama, but it's not too different. So uh, Desmond Ritter got sacked six times against Bama. Again, yep. No touchdowns, 144 totally yards. <laughs> Yep. Uh, Matt Corral got sacked twice against Bama. Oh, wow. 213 yards in a touchdown. Uh, I think Desmond Ritter is sa- more sackable, he, even <laughs> though he's very this, athletic. Yeah. Based on these numbers? <laughs> yes, he's, he's much more sackable. Um, also, Mincy has totally brainwashed me into him being a tough, savvy quarterback who throws bombs. So Mincy has totally uh, corrupted my mind on Matt Corral because we watch the games and this is what we were just talking about. Okay. I love it. Okay, so I like Matt Corral a lot. I agree. I agree with your analysis of him in terms of his sackability. My concern about him is that Matt Corral, if I'm not mistaken, he's a forearm tattoo guy, I right? Like that, that actually, actually that I, plays into next. Uh, does next it? Because I don't know if I've ever seen a great quarterback with a forearm tattoo. Well, we'll get Taylor there Heineck, Monday. Taylor Heineke. Taylor we'll Heineke's one. Yeah. Wait, but I blogged the whole thing, so people are going to know if I blog it. Should I not blog? I'll not blog. It. Yeah, don't blog the final. Okay. Keep out the final four. Right. So, yeah, and then we'll do final four Monday. I like the perfect. like the anticipation of who's mm-hmm. going to fucking get your brackets. Yeah. I want to see yeah. people yeah, brackets. Send us sure. filled out brackets of what you think the final four will play. How it will so play out. So this is what the final four is. Kenny Pickett plays Malik Willis. Yep. Jack Cohen plays Matt Corral. Okay. And that's a. Uh, and then we'll see the who wins. Four. Yeah, so fill out your brackets and tweet us. At. Yeah, where I are the games? Being, where are they being played? Uh, they're being played in my mind. Okay, neutral Wait. site. Neutral site in my mind. So uh, no, no drugs in your mind. No drugs, no beer. No drugs, no beer. Neutral site on Monday. What about? Yeah, yeah, right. Like you can't, you can't be under the influence because then that's not neutral site. When I wrote it, it was a neutral site. Okay, has, got it. Has Jack Cohen ever played against Alabama? Mm, no. You got to find another common opponent then. No, well, that's not the factor. In, it's already played out. Okay, okay. it's already, sorry, played sorry, out. Yeah, it's yeah, been played yeah. out. But yeah. I, I like the fact that we're going to put out another bracket on Sunday or Monday because yeah, right. Like this bracket season, this will be I the will most cl- important bracket we discuss on Monday. I will click on anything yeah. online with a bracket. Yes, if, if Homeboy's got a bracket, he's like going to yep. get it. Bracket right. of ketchup. Stay tuned. Okay, we're going to wrap up the show. We have uh, Billy Football's Final Four of quarterbacks in the 2022 draft. I know everyone's been. Eagerly waiting for the finale of this uh, bracket. Before we do that, Billy, what was Kirk Cousins' contract? We alluded to it. He got, I want to say, thirty million. Actually, let's look it up so that we can get the numbers right. The bottom line is that Kirk Cousins will make, by the time this contract's over, almost three hundred million dollars. He'll end up making over three hundred million dollars in his entire career. You are expecting me to say something about negative right now about Kirk Cousins. I will not do it. Kirk Cousins played the game the exact way perfectly that it should be played because the guy, I think he's exactly 500 for his career. He's not really won any notable games that you can think of. No, the, the only notable game you can think of Kirk Cousins winning was actually Case Keenum winning. The Minnesota Miracle. There's that. Well, no, he, <laughs> he also won the You Like That game. Yes, but that's like the best part is like you, you think like, oh yeah, Kirk Cousins, of course. The game against the Saints, like nope, that was Case Keenum. Yep. So he is, he is the bad god. I uh, I take my hat off in respect of Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins will be a great, great uh, hypothetical where you can be like, whose career would you rather have, and pick any quarterback that had like more success. 
but you forget that Kirk Cousins essentially every he basically like hit every good spot on Monopoly board. Every time that something could have been good for him mm -hmm. financially, he knocked it out of the park. So I believe that Kirk Cousins whose career would you rather have, Big Cat? Kirk Cousins or Aaron Rodgers? I mean that's that but you can't do Super Bowls. I would but he's probably only got rather, the one. I'd, I'd rather have Rodgers' career, although he doesn't have any friends or family, so maybe Kirk Cousins, mm -hmm. right? Because at the end of the day, what's money? Mm -hmm. That's true, right? Like, what's you can't spend all your money. You know, who's who's going to give it to? Well, that's the thing about Kirk Cousins is, what is he going to spend three hundred million dollars on? Yeah, his, his kids can have it. I don't know. Grills. Yeah, you're right. I still Kirk think Cousins he's definitely he, can't spend the money. He's there. burying it in in peanut butter jars in his backyard. Yeah, and he's got like a sick fleet of minivans. All right, Billy, let's do it. So where we left off was the final four. We have Kenny Pickett, Malik Willis, Jack Cohen, and Matt Corral in our last uh, final four. So the first matchup is Kenny Pickett versus Malik Willis. Uh, Kenny Pickett advances the finals oh. over Malik Willis. Uh, it's uh, Kenny Pickett. I mean, it was just his fake slide. Like when you got a guy who knows the rules so well and just improvised like that, you just got to. He's got to advance. He's it's kind of like you. Yeah. You yeah. just improvise. You just got to improvise. Yes. You know, Billy, you stick on your feet. Your brain does a fake slide pretty frequently. All the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. It, I, I'm happy you have Kenny Pig in the finals because there yeah. was a little pressure. He is a friend of the program. Mm. Um, was there That wasn't changed at all since you met him. No. No. Okay. Well, there was... Oh. There was something fake slide, but that, that's that's <laughs> going to be it? for the finals. We'll talk about why. Okay, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, then we got Jack Cohen, Matt Corral. I'm going to pick Matt Corral. You know, I think his durability might be an issue at the next level. He's hurt now, but uh, I think one thing that pushed Jack Cohen ahead of Matt Corral was that uh, Jack Cohen like popped his finger out. Then he popped back in. Then he threw a touchdown pass to win the game. Yep. So that's why he's in the finals. So Wait, wait. I thought that you put Corral in the finals. No, no Jack I, Cohen's in the finals. I got very confused by the way that you set that up. Okay, so Cohen beats Corral. Cohen beats Corral. But so what about got, the fact that, that Corral, everybody was saying, hey, don't play in this game. Don't play in this game. And he wanted to be out there with his guys so badly that he went ahead and played in the bowl game. Is That that should be a plus sign for him, right? I mean, it is, but like the visual of just seeing Jack Cohen pop his finger back in then throw a game-winning touchdown is just legendary. Yeah, so that is legendary. You know, that's one of those things you can't beat. So you have Jack Cohen versus Kenny Pickett in your final. Would you yes. say that you are officially a Bill Polian disciple? You just like average white guys? No. Okay. No. I think honestly, I think Malik Willis is going to have a really good NFL career as a wide receiver or quarterback. Quarterback. Okay. I good. Think, I that think, was a good you know, test. No, seriously, I think he's what they advertise him as. He's Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson hybrid. He's got the arm. Of, That's a that, sick that would, hybrid. Yeah, yeah, that would That's honestly like make him the best. It would make him the yeah. best quarterback of all time. <laughs> That's like, but the that thing is, is the sickest hybrid of all time. It'd be like, could you ever imagine if you if you made like a tiger? Mixed with a shark, they're like how awesome that would be. You should go see this band tonight. They're like the Beatles and Led Zeppelin. Yeah. The thing is with Malik Willis <laughs> is that we just started to hear the buzz now at the combine, and you know, I, I mean, a lot of guys were hearing about Malik Willis like during the season, but he's only really come he to didn't the have, forefront now. Yeah, he didn't have a great year at Liberty. Like yeah. he had a good year the year before. Yeah. Which actually you could say is kind of similar to Josh Allen. He had a better year. The year before his junior year at Wyoming. So I, I told Cons that I think that I wanted Malik Willis as a commander. Cons brought up the fact that he he got into a fist fight against Army, so he punched the troops. Oh, in that hmm. game. So that's that took him off Cons' big board. Sounds like he's a rider. He is. He is a rider <laughs> for sure. Also, a lot of his impro improv stuff that he does during the game, like he could actually like you know, it's either going to translate and he's going to be like a Patrick Mahomes, or it's not. So and that's one of those things where okay. it's like so like Hall of Famer or bust exactly yep I like that yeah that's I mean hey one of those you're what if he ends up being like Kirk Cousins though then you'd be wrong well remember that one time who was I talking about and I was saying like he's either gonna be Tom Brady or he's gonna be uh, the Memphis quarterback oh, Paxton name. Lynch yeah. Paxton Lynch who did that you was say that, about? that was my Trevor Lawrence take oh yeah that's you right be Tom Brady or Paxton Lynch I mean it's one <laughs> no, of, in between. no in between so there's a lot of in between yeah. Yeah. Uh, so now we're in the finals. We got okay. Kenny Pickett, Jack Cohen. Uh, Where's it being played? Uh, I think it's Orlando. In okay. Or okay. <laughs> <laughs> Orlando. So we went from the first round was being played in your mind, yeah. and then the finals is in Orlando. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Outdoors. Epcot. What's the weather like? It's 68. 
Breezy. Oh, is it that field that they do like the the Pee Wee National Championship yep. at? Yeah. Okay, it's I like that. Pop Warner. Okay, but yep. no no rain. No rain. Sixty eight. Breezy. Sixty eight. What about humidity? Humidity's gonna be hovering around forty percent. Okay, okay, that's not too day. bad. So it's you know kind of a perfect day. Exactly. It's be one of those. Uh, so the final, should we save for today or tomorrow? Yeah, no, 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 I think we're, we're we ready. Need, it doesn't need to be a trilogy. I can't, Billy, I, I, I can't go another two days in the suspense. I, okay, I, this so, weekend was torture for me because I was just <laughs> thinking about this. So, unfortunately, Jack Cohen's Cinderella run is going to come to an end. What? In the final. Yeah, so. And again, this has nothing to do with the fact that you met Kenny Pickett. No. And that we well, like Well, you know Kenny what? Pickett. I was going to dub him. I was going to dub him, but I asked Kenny Wait. Pickett. Come back to come back to the real world, not, right? Not not playing Fortnite. What were you gonna do? Well, I was gonna, I I honestly <laughs> I had a serious doubt because of Kenny Pickett's glove usage, and I was like I had to figure out because you know playing like my limited quarterback experience and you know like wearing a glove gloves wear out quickly. Like you can, you can't have like it's about consistency. If you have a sticky glove that becomes less sticky throughout a game or throughout mm -hmm. a week, you know you're going to have difference in variability when you throw the ball. Well, do you think it might be like like basketball shoes though? Like in the NBA like they can most guys I think wear new shoes every game. Right. Like he new gloves every game? Yeah, so that's why I asked him about. It. I said, "Hey, Kenny, so like what's your philosophy on the gloves? Are you like wear like breaking in gloves? Like where's your sweet spot on glove usage?" And he says that he uses a new pair of gloves every game, every workout. And then oh. that's, that's what sold me. That's what sold me. Wow. That's why I talked to him cuz that's consistency because that's the one thing when people are worried about gloves, it's like, you know, there's a lot of variability like when it's just your hand, it's pretty consistent. Your hand is your hand. Exactly. Uh, so, you know, he uses a new pair of gloves every game. So that's consistent. He likes to throw with that's the sticky gloves. That's so many gloves. That's a lot of gloves I, that, that you're going through. Yeah, it's like... OJ used gloves, too. The mm -hmm. 50, 50 but he was innocent. pair. But he was innocent. He wa he welcomed the legal process to play out. For Shefty. Wait, so I think Kenny Pickett has, like... If Kenny Pickett goes on to be a Hall of Fame quarterback, mm -hmm. think about how much money he can make by selling these gloves. True. Like, if he plays 200 games mm -hmm. in the NFL... Yep. That's a lot of merchandise. That's a sell. lot of gloves. The Giants and Eli Manning would kill for that they, type of turnover. Yeah, they might. Maybe they should draft him. That's he's a natural fit for the they, Giants. They wouldn't have to lie about all the all the game used merchandise. Hmm. Also, is he would have a lot of those uh, those uh, playing cards that got put out there of like featuring a yes, real slice of Kenny glove. Pickett's glove. Wait, hmm. so Kenny Pickett wins your draft, exactly. which uh, just to remind everyone, Sam Ellinger won last year. Um, and but he loses this fuckable spiral right. draft. The thing is, I still can't get over the glove. The glove. Yeah, I mean, makes I'm, sense. I'm old fashioned mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, makes sense.